Back in the 80s, lots of companies were competing over the top ranks with their iron cassette decks. One company was recognized as a pinnacle of excellence in cassette deck industry. It was, of course, Nakamichi. After the Nakamichi Dragon CT turntable review, I've got another Nakamichi Dragon here to play with. You guessed it right, I'm talking about their famous tape deck. The name itself screams power, and it's not by chance, the Dragon is considered to be one of the best tape decks of all time. From time to time, an excellent deck appeared. Revox B215, Tandberg 3014, TXZ7000, Yamaha KX1200, Sony's DCK777 or Nakamichi's own CR7E. People started calling these the Dragon Slayer or the Dragon Killer, but were they really? It only demonstrated one thing and one thing only, the Dragon was really special and everybody was trying their best to take it down of the throne. It was 1982 and everybody else was naming their products A, B, C, X, Y, Z, 5, 6, 4, blah, blah, blah. But Nakamichi came out with the Dragon. Nakamichi always named all their decks the same way the other companies did, except for the cassette deck, cassette deck, and then the Dragon. It was the last time they did that, and they would never do that again. The name itself is powerful, and for a good reason. It was a monster. Not cause of the size or number of buttons and knobs, but unbelievable sound, mechanical and build quality and state-of-the-art features. When new, the Dragon cost 280,000 yen, which was about 1900 US dollars, which is about 5700 today. I know it seems like a lot, and it is, but the Dragon was a replacement for another monster, the 1000ZXL. And if you reckon the Dragon was pricey, the 1000ZXL Gold cost 6000 US dollars, which is about 18000 dollars today, or almost 14000 quid. Even today the Dragon is quite pricey, some people want a nonsense for the deck. The Dragon was designed by Kozo Kobayashi and Nero Nakamichi. Nero was Etsuro Nakamichi's brother, who unfortunately died the same month the Dragon came out. Nakamichi always knew how to design a device, and the Dragon wasn't an exception. There are many cassette decks out there with exceptional design, but Nakamichi was always somehow special. Not only because their decks were praised by practically everyone for the sound quality, but they really look amazing. It may seem like the Dragon is a tad overpopulated, but every button and every knob is actually quite useful. All control buttons and knobs work perfectly, nothing feels knackered, and the response of all buttons is instantaneous. Build quality is simply superb. Level meters are simple, but I fancy how they look, they match the AEs perfectly. Play and record indicators look very nice, and it even changes the color when you're recording. Nakamichi decks were always about top performance, and the Dragon wasn't an exception. Nakamichi has implemented a number of new features, some of them quite revolutionary. Let's start with the obvious one. Lots of lower end decks from that time got only two ads, one for playback and recording, and one for erasing the tape. The Dragons got three, one for playback, one for recording, and one for erasing. Playback and record ads are made of crystal alloy, Nakamichi's proprietary material that is a bit softer, but magnetically more linear. They rate it for 10,000 hours, which doesn't seem too much, but if you consider that you listen to the cassettes 2 hours a day, it makes it last 5,000 days, which is almost 14 years of everyday playback. This is up a couple of advantages. Since there are separate ads for playback and recording, the ads are usually higher quality. Not only that, but with separate ads you can monitor what's being recorded in real time. One ad is recording, while the other one is playing back what's being recorded. This setup is one obvious disadvantage though, it's more expensive. Another quite small but significant improvement was pressure pad lifter, which significantly reduced scrape flutter by pushing the cassette's pressure pad out of the way. Another feature was a direct drive. And it's exactly what it says it is. The capstans are driven rather directly by a gear train and not by belts as it was standard at the time. Direct drive is at a simpler and you don't have to worry about replacing worn out belts or belt slippage. The motors are controlled by a quartz clock, and it made the Dragon exceptionally accurate. Wow, and flutter used to be a big thing back then, and you couldn't find anything better than the Dragon at the time. The problem may arise when the cogwheels are worn out, then it's more expensive to replace them. Perhaps the most important and most interesting feature of them all was NAAC, Nakamichi Autoism of Correction. It's a system that adjusts the playback at in real time to detect and then to correct the azimuth error for better accuracy. Even though it was a massive success, Nakamichi didn't implement the NAAC in any other cassette deck ever since. 
The Dragon Wars, the first Nakamichi cassette deck with bi-directional auto-reverse playback. In combination with the NNAC, it was a bloody masterpiece. When a deck uses some sort of reverse mechanism, it's usually a low-end deck, because when the tape is in a reverse mode, the ad should be realigned for optimal performance, and it of course costs money to implement such a feature. The Dragon just reverses the direction, and the NAAC does all the rest. However, it was very expensive to produce and maintain, so Nakamichi dropped the system for the future decks and implemented for example this, somewhat over-engineered but apparently cheaper to produce. There was only one system similar to NAAC, and it was made by Marantz. It was called MAAC. I reckon you can guess what that stands for. As well as Nakamichi, Marantz implemented the MAAC system only once. While the playback works in both directions, the recording works only in the forward direction. That also means when you're recording, and you're in the auto-reverse mode, the Dragon won't start recording on the other side, but rather start the playback. The Dragon is layered with buttons and knobs, let's have a gander at what these do. I don't have to explain what power button does, do I? Timer is exactly what you think it is. You can set a timer to auto-start playback or recording. This one here is obviously a ninja button. Reset resets the tape counter. Memory switch depends on stop play switch. When memory switch is on and stop play switch is set to stop, the cassette is stopped when the counter reaches naught, while fast forwarding or rewinding. You can guess what happens when it's set to play. Auto reverse is, of course, for playing the other side of the cassette automatically after one side has reached the end. I would call this section tape control. There are a couple of interesting features here. You can use queuing to quickly find track or whatever you're looking for by fast finding and listening to what's on the tape. There's nothing unusual about the record button, except you engage recording by pressing the record button and while ordering it, you have to press the play or pause button. Rec mute button cuts off the signal during recording. Auto fader simply performs fade in or fade out effect. The Dragons go quite elaborate calibration system. Unlike newer tape decks where the calibration is often automated, the Dragons calibration is purely manual. It looks quite complicated at first due to a large number of buttons, but it's rather easy really. It's got three calibration sections depending on the used cassette type. EX is not coming just way off saying type 1, SX is type 2, and ZX is, you guessed it, type 4. To properly calibrate the cassette, first you need to select the proper type and EQ, in this case it's EX and 120 microseconds, then make sure the Dolby is turned off and start recording. Level button generates 400 Hz to calibrate volume level. You need to adjust the signal level on these two knobs and get it to not dB on the level meters. After that, the bias needs to be adjusted pretty much the same way the level does. Unfortunately, it usually breaks the level adjustment, so you have to go back, get the level right, then the bias again, and back and forth until both are perfect level. It may take some time to get it right. And now your cassette is ready to be recorded on. For those who wonder how to calibrate Type 3, even though the manual says the deck is not suited for use with Ferrochrome cassettes, I tried that anyway. I went sort of halfway, I used EX tape selector with 7 nanoseconds, and I reckon it went quite well, I'll let you listen to that in a minute. There are three input level knobs, one is master, and the other two are separate for left and right channel. Why two sets of controls for the same thing you ask? Well, I have no idea. I try to turn the master knob all the way to the right and regulate the volume with the other two and vice versa to test if there is any difference in sound quality, and I found out there isn't. The only difference is that these can control left and right channels separately. Output is for controlling output level. Monitor button is useful while recording to check the difference between the source and the tape that's been recorded on. There are two modes for Dolby, B and C. Dolby B should improve signal to noise ratio up to 10 decibels and Dolby C up to 20 decibels. We'll see about that. What wouldn't go amiss would be Dolby S, but the Dragon is too old for that. MPX fell arcas of the 19 color signal from FM broadcast, which could cook up the recording from FM radio while using the Dolby noise reduction. Subsonic fell arcas of low frequencies caused by, for example, turntables, rumble, etc. 
I've read all over the web the Dragon's got unmatched sound quality, even against most modern tape decks, and by most modern I mean made in 2000 or so. I'm gonna test 4 cassettes, type 1, 2, type 4, and I wonder if we can hear actual difference between these recordings. I'll let you listen what I've recorded so you can compare it by yourselves. These are of course direct recordings, it's the best possible way to let you hear what the Dragon is capable of. Sure, somebody may argue it also depends on the entire chain, DAC, ADC, etc, but again, that's the only way to do it. I've chosen 6 tracks for this test and recorded them on the cassette I've selected. I'm going to record these tracks back to the PC for an ADC to find out if there's any difference between the original recording and the recording from the Dragon. I'll use these cassettes for this test. I've recorded all those tracks 3 times. First without using the Dolby system, then using the Dolby B and then the Dolby C to compare if it's got any impact on the final recording. The Dolby should improve the signal to noise ratio up to 20 dB and of course to reduce noise significantly. I went a bit overboard with the recordings, it's a bit longer than I initially intended. Now let's have a listen.
The manual says the Dragon is able to reach frequencies as low as 20Hz and as high as 21kHz with Type 1 and Type 2 cassette and 20Hz and 22kHz with Type 4 cassette. Naturally I wanted to test this. I've generated 10, 20, 30, 40 Hz and 15, 16, 20, 21, 22 and 23 kilohertz. Recorded all these on the metal tape and played them back. Even though practically nobody can hear frequencies above 20 kW, I was curious if the Dragon can actually record and reproduce those frequencies stated in the manual. 10 Hz was too low for the Dragon, but 20 Hz was proper good, even though there was lots of background noise compared to the source, so this bit of a scale was alright. Let's move to high frequencies then. This bit wasn't as good. The Dragon's had problem reproducing even 15 kW. That was disappointing. Me personally, I can't hear frequencies higher than 15.5 kHz, so it's no big deal for me. Moreover, I don't reckon any music reaches such high frequencies either, but I believed it would match the specs. Erase ratio is more than 60 dB. That doesn't sound very good in theory, but I've made a video about tape erasing, where I've tested the bulk tape eraser and the dragon against each other. It turns out the Dragon is capable of erasing any tape type and won't leave any residual bit of the deleted track behind. I've even boosted the volume of the deleted bits to find out if I could hear anything and the Dragon did a cracking job erasing whatever was on the tape. If you're interested, check the video out.
The dragon really is a beast. The sound quality it produces is astonishing even by today's standards. But the question is, is the dragon something you can't live without or any cassette deck for the matter? Of course not. Unless you've got all your music on cassettes or you need to record to cassettes for some reason, the cassette deck is just another piece of hardware you don't need anymore. It's bloody expensive, you need to service it proper to make sure it's gonna last, cassettes are inconvenient and pricey, and if some of the dragons had died for whatever reason, you can't do anything about it but buy another dragon and use it for spare parts. In case you collect auto electronics and the dragon is something you really crave for, then sure, go for it, it's an amazing machine. Whatever you record with the dragon, with the use of a good cassette, comes out pretty much perfect. Sure, the tapes hiss quite a lot, but if you use the Dolby noise reduction, the outcome is brilliant for 60 year old technology. When I was test recording for this review, I tried to keep all peaks around 0 dB. Some cassettes, however, can take some degree of abuse and can peak much higher before the distortion creeps in, which also reduces noise quite a lot. If you've got some old cassettes with the music you can't get anywhere anymore, or you just want to listen to the cassettes for nostalgic reasons, the Dragon is perfect for you. But if you're looking for a simple system to listen to the music, you should look elsewhere. Cassettes are a pain in the ass for vast majority of people today. You can record about 90 minutes on one cassette, which can be quite expensive depending on the cassette you want to use, compared to about a million minutes you can store on today's most basic computer or mobile phone which is basically free to do. What matters in the end is to enjoy the bloody music. And that's the video, see you lot in the comments.